Hi, and welcome to Ask the Mayor, a quarterly program intended to connect the Wallingford residents with this municipal government. I'm Kyle Swartz, the Communications Specialist here at Town Hall. Joining me today is our Mayor, Vinnie Cervoni. Thank you so much, Mayor. Morning, Kyle. Now, it wouldn't be a discussion of Wallingford if we didn't dive headfirst into the community pool. Can you tell me a little bit about what's going on there right now? Well, obviously you shouldn't dive into it right now. <laughs> um, but we, uh, any day now, we should have cost estimates that I want to present to the council before we start the bidding process, because the bidding process ends with bonding the project if the council decides to go forward with it. Um, so that's where we are. And um, I've seen an email recently from the contractor from whom we are awaiting the bid, I mean the, uh, the cost estimate. And as soon as I have that, I will transmit it to the council. Fantastic. I'm sure the residents are eagerly awaiting the next step there, and it's good to hear that progress is being made there. One of the issues that's coming up right now at town council meetings is the uh, Choate Crossing Bridge. Can you tell me a little bit about what's going on there? Yes, Choate has proposed a pedestrian bridge um, for uh, kind of a high point on Christian Street that would connect athletic fields um, to the back of the campus and to better parking for the athletic fields. Um, it uh, was discussed at the last council meeting. It's coming up again at this council meeting. At the last council meeting, the council had favorable feedback uh, by and large. So at the upcoming council meeting, uh, we are going to review a proposed agreement for the air rights easement. Uh, the bridge is going to be high enough that a truck should be able to drive under it. Um, also, the supports for the bridge are going to be far enough apart that the supports don't land on the town's right of way. That's good to hear. And obviously, this is a matter of security. You can just talk a little bit about how this is going to improve security for pedestrians and safety for pedestrians in that area? Yes. At the point where the bridge will be located um, is a very poor visibility area. Um, it's, it's, you know, at the, the crest of a hill, um, and while it is a 25 or 30 mile per hour road, uh, it seems like people habitually drive faster than that. It's just human nature. And um, it's at a location where probably it, it's an, it perceived as an optimal crossing because of its proximity to um, other choke uh, structures. And, uh, you, you you crest that hill, and if somebody's in the road, um, it's somebody that you can't see until you're very close to them. So it is uh, intended to be a safety improvement uh, for pedestrian safer safety um, and, and to make driving in the road better. Yeah, it's certainly going to benefit Choate. Choate, with the kids coming back soon, safety must be top of mind over there. But also just, you know, Wallingford res residents in general. I love taking walks around Choate. I walk around with my wife and our little kid all the time. It's good to know that there's uh, some safety measures being put in there. Certainly cars drive a little too fast over there sometimes. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is, is that there are uh, athletic programs in town. Mm. Uh, town residents do use those fields. Uh, you know, I'm aware that uh, the town soccer program um, use, uses those fields. And uh, so town residents will m more than benefit from uh, the location of the bridge and its use. You really can't go wrong when you're increasing safety for the children in town. So that's good to hear. Um, speaking of the children in town and community, the Wallingford Police Department recently hosted their first national night out. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I had a chance to go myself and I had a wonderful time. I was there too. Uh, it was a wonderful time. It was supposed to be on Tuesday night uh, a few weeks ago. And because of threatening rain, and it eventually did rain, it was moved uh, to Wednesday night. The original location was going to be Doolittle Park but it was moved uh, up to South Main Street uh, and held in conjunction with the Twilight New Tunes concert. South Main Street uh, between Prince and Center Street was closed. Um, it was very well attended. Uh, there was a uh, positive spirit, community vibe in the air. I think Wallingford Police do a really good job of interacting with the community outside of being called to act. Uh, and this was a further opportunity for people to interact with Wallingford police in, in, a, um, in a positive, in a non-emergent situation. Uh, the socialization was wonderful. 
Um, and then, you know, having it in conjunction with Twilight Tunes um, really was, it, it, you know, a, a, a beneficial coincidence. And um, I, I had a conversation with our parks director, and I believe we're going to consider um, next year when we have the event again, it's supposed to be on the first Tuesday in August, uh, we'll consider having Twilight Tunes on Tuesday night that week. Mm -hmm so that the event can be on South Main Street again. Yeah, I thought it worked well with uh, the Twilight Tunes there. Like, like you said, I know it was supposed to have been at Foot Park, but to me, it just seems like a natural uh, thing to tie the two events together. It really worked very well, and um, the, the community interaction with both police and fire were there. Uh, it was really a, a, a terrific event, um, again, engaging in community spirit. Absolutely. And I was going to say that as well. It wasn't just police. Of course, the fire department was there. I think I saw EMTs there as well. I love when the kids go inside of the police cruisers, inside the fire uh, 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 cruisers, the fire trucks, and they, when they go inside of the ambulances. The kids love that kind of stuff. And it presents those kind of emergency services in such a positive way to let the kids know that, you know, this is part of the community. Absolutely. You know, normalizing those interactions mm. uh, makes them so much easier when it is in an emergent situation and you know in a situation where uh stress is elevated and uh and people are frightened uh, but you know if you if you perceive them as a comfortable regular presence in your life you're not afraid uh, when they're around and you know you're in a stressful situation absolutely uh, did you play any of the games over there did you play any checkers any cornhole i did not have the opportunity to because i had to leave for another meeting sure uh, but, sure. you know, hopefully the next time we have the event, I'll have more time. We're going to play some cornhole next time. Okay. <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit about some of the technological advances going on here at Town Hall? Obviously, Wallingford Town Hall, not known for its technology. Uh, you coming in, that was part of the thing that you were running on, improving the technological um, abilities of Town Hall. Can you tell me a little bit about what's going on and where we are with that? We have hired our information technology director. That's not new news mm -hmm. at this point in the quarter. But um, he is hard at work. Uh, one of the things that becomes vital before we update the hardware uh, and software is that we build um, safety and security for the network in. Um, so we are on the verge of installing a uh, town government-wide firewall. Mm. I anticipate that will be done very soon. Once that is in place and op operating um, optimally, then we will uh, go full steam ahead with, uh, with software and hardware upgrades. Um, and, and really, uh, it is my hope that one of our first achievements is the forward-facing elements, the interaction with, uh, with, with people and businesses in Wallingford. We are looking at a smart uh, a, a permitting system called SmartGov. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that that comes into operation very soon. Um, it will allow uh, people who have to apply for uh, building permits, for zoning permits, for zoning variances, um, and for similar applications to do so through the online portal. Uh, the system comes with a tracking uh, system that uh, will make it much easier for us to stay on track and on top of things and see that things move through efficiently. Streamlining that seems like it would be an enormous help to our local businesses, so I hope to hear that that uh, comes together sooner than later. We're all hoping for it happening quickly. <laughs> Speaking of permits, one of the issues that's also been in the town council recently has been the change on the health department permits for uh, restaurants, bars and restaurants. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yes. Uh, our permitting fees hadn't been looked at in about a decade. Um, they were extremely low and uh, not reflective of the work that is now required. The application process uh, has become uh, more intensive as a result of state regulation and requirements. Um, so uh, our health department officials are working harder, spending more time on these permits. Um, so the fees were adjusted to reflect the amount of work uh, that was, that's being put in. Uh, they're, they slightly more than tripled, but they are still definitely lower than the application and permit fees for the surrounding towns. And, and that goes true uh, with fines as well. So while our fines have been increased, they are still lower than our surrounding neighbors. 
I like the quote from one of the town councilors, and I apologize because I'm now blanking on uh, which town councilor it was, but he made a very good point that maybe we don't want Wallingford to be known as the town where it's cheap and easy to run a restaurant, or in other words, where the permitting fees are ridiculously low, so perhaps you can skirt on some issues. It's good to know that they're being brought up in line with the reality of the world that we're in right now. Um, so that was Chris Regan. Chris Regan, thank you. Yep. And, and it, it's, it's a valid point. You know, um, we're still more competitive and it's not really, it's not really the most expensive fee that a restaurateur is gonna encounter in the process of opening or running a restaurant. Feels like we don't wanna be competitive for the wrong reasons, we wanna be competitive for the right reasons. I thought Chris made a very good point there. Yep. Uh, can you give us whatever the latest update is on the police headquarters? So uh, we are nearing completion of all facets of construction. Um, for people who don't know, where is that? That is at 100 Barnes Road. Um, we, we were projecting that we would be done with most of the trades work uh, in July and that we would only be waiting for the electrical switch gear to be installed. Uh, and that was looking like um, our last predictions. Well, when I was last on the committee as the chairman of the town council, the electrical switch gear was going to come in in September, October and be installed. And we were looking at maybe a late October, early November move. The switch gear came in ahead of projection. Mm. And so they're working on that now. And it is our hope that we can coordinate a move earlier in the fall. Fantastic. Rare the building thing that comes in earlier. Absolutely. And, and this is, you know, this is a supply chain issue that we've been experiencing since COVID. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're pleased that we are running ahead of schedule, even, even if it's just, you know, four to six weeks. It's, uh, it's an important move. It's going to be a state of the art command center for public safety. Um, and it's, it's really, it's going to enhance significantly the way um, our police are able to work and protect this town. That's great to hear. And I was speaking with our police chief a couple of weeks ago about this, and he was obviously very, very excited about this. The department is very excited, excited about this. The town should be very excited about this. I look forward to when that police department opens. Do you have any idea what's going to happen with their old building, the old armory? I do not. Uh, we will be looking uh, at the variety of, of possible uses for it, whether uh, it is kept for some governmental purpose um, or we explore some commercial use of it. Um, you know, I, I know the Board of Education looked at it for its uh, potential central office and adult education program, and the cost of, of remodeling it for their purposes was exorbitant. Um, I'm gonna say it was in the vicinity of $10 million. Uh, and as you may have heard, uh, we are on track to purchase for Fairfield Boulevard mm -hmm. so that they can um, move their central offices, uh, the adult education program, and there's, a, there's an additional adult education uh, program that they will be moving over there, uh, hopefully within a year. Good to hear, good to hear. Um, some other uh, Wallingford news recently was that we received a $435,000 open space and watershed land acquisition grant from the Connecticut Deep Department uh, towards the purchase of 138 Williams Road for the purpose of protecting an important watershed and reservoir source, the Muddy River. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure, the Muddy River goes through there and it feeds our reservoirs. Um, so, and it's a class A river, uh, means it's pristine water and we wanna maintain that water quality uh, so that we are getting high quality water for our reservoirs and continuing to provide high quality water for our water customers. Um, so we, we did purchase this per parcel. Uh, it was the second of two. We had a similar grant experience with the earlier parcel on Williams Road, the earlier purchase. Um, after we purchased 138, we did find out that we got the grant as a reimbursement of $435,000. And that was the maximum amount, I believe it's about 55% mm. um, that we qualified for. Um, so we're very pleased with the support from DEP. Uh, it, you know, it's, it's, it means that what we're doing in preserving open space and water quality is very consistent with their mission. So important to preserve local resources. You really can't put a, uh, I can't stress enough how important that is. Yes. One issue you sometimes hear people in town talk about is the state of the roads and state of the sidewalks. 
Uh, can you tell me a little bit about the current state of where we are and perhaps updating and fixing some of those? We, we are working on our annual paving uh, town-wide. It's being scheduled. Um, in addition, we were able to find um, an additional half million dollars so that we will be able to pave more roads this season. Uh, so we are looking, looking forward to those improvements. You should be seeing those around town in the very near future through the fall. Good to hear. Good to hear. Another thing you see a lot if you follow the Wallingford um, Facebook and other uh, social media forums, as I do, is people are constantly looking to try to move into the town. And they're constantly trying to find tips on where, you know, some new real estate or some new apartments might open up. The Wallingford real estate market is red hot right now. We all know it. It's very difficult to move into town. And uh, homes in town are going for very high prices, as I was saying the other day. Just the neighborhood I live in, a small house that's on a slab with no basement went up for sale. And I think it sold in under a week. So the real estate market is red hot right now. Why do you see that in Wallingford? Well, I, I believe that it's part of a, a post-COVID trend. Um, you know, I, I think people are, are considering real estate a more secure investment than it had been in the last decade uh, because of what we went through over the past four years. I believe that people believe it's important to own homes. Um, I think there's a gener generation that uh, some are downsizing that's contributing mm -hmm. uh, to the real estate trends. Um, and so while there are nationwide trends that are affecting the real estate market, I also believe Wallingford is a great place to move into. Um, there are a lot of community services. We have these tremendously inexpensive electric rates, which you know is a hot topic conversation in Connecticut right now because really is. what is happening with the investor owned utilities mm -hmm. um, so and and there are jobs in this town one of the things that uh, has become clearer to me over my past uh, 14 15 years involved in town government is that we produce products that leave Wallingford and travel all over the world you know holochrome makes fasteners for a whole array of manufacturers that um, you know the two examples that I think most people can relate to are Cummings diesel engines and Harley Davidson motorcycles. You know, again, products that go all over the world. Uh, Ulbrich Specialty Metals produces parts that end up in BMWs. Uh, produces actually produces guitar strings that end up all over the world. Instrument perhaps, strings perhaps end up in your own house in your own collection. They end up on my guitars. <laughs> I, I switched the brand of guitar string that I use because I knew Obrick was supplying steel to them. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, same with Big Chemical, mm. um, and Allnex. You know, Allnex produces coatings, you know, soup cans, soda cans, any kind of uh, food can very likely has an all next produced coating and they go all over the world. So these are employment opportunities that could be a draw to bring people to Wallingford. It's one of the matrix, parts of the matrix that make this a great town to be in. Absolutely. And those large businesses also uh, comprise a, a large portion of our grand list. Why perhaps it's important when you're talking about creating a budget to understand that when you're raising taxes, the taxes raised for a household, of course, nobody wants to pay more. Perhaps it's not an enormous amount to pay, but when you raise a percentage, that is a very large percentage for a business such as those. Yes. You know, you talk about percentages, when you translate them to dollars and, you know, the taxable real estate and personal property that a business has, those become much higher dollar increases than they do for the average homeowner. It's very important to keep in mind those businesses that help keep Wallingford afloat and help comprise our grand list in that way. Um, when I think of you as mayor, you know, the two things that really come to my mind, excuse me, when I think of you as a person, maybe not just as mayor, what comes to my mind is your love of music and your love of your dogs. And I want to ask you some questions about those. And you already mentioned your uh, guitar strings. We are trying to find some guitar strings that represent locally made steel. Can you tell me a, bit, a little bit about your love of music? When, when did that begin? In my childhood, um, there was music on in my house. Uh, my mother had been a fan of Elvis Presley. Uh, so very often on weekends, his movies were on, you know, they were, um, they were on network television uh, through the 70s. Um, and, it, you know, it was always something that was part of my life. The, the early instruments that uh, my parents offered me the opportunity to learn on were key instruments. You know, I, I had an accordion. Hmm. Um, you play the accordion? 
um, not publicly and not very well, uh, but it, w it was my first instrument. It was sure. a really, really hard instrument for a five-year-old to coordinate, <laughs> you know, pumping the bellows and, and pushing the Big keys. Big instrument, too. And I, I had, I was given a child size one okay. from, from Italy. My grandfather had sent over, but it was still a cumbersome. Sure. And then um, switched to, you know, an electric organ. Uh, and then once I picked up the guitar, it, you know, all the pieces came together for me. Mm -hmm. And especially, um, you know, I had a teacher uh, finally when I was 15 years old who was teaching me how to play the music I was listening to at the time, you know, the rock music that was on MTV. And, and that, that just, uh, kind of snowballed. Um, so it's always been part of me. It's, I try to pick up the guitar, even if it's for just a few minutes every day. Um, I perform when given the opportunity. Uh, recently, Wallingford Community Theater put on uh, the musical School of Rock, and um, I put together a band to uh, play a song near the end of the play that was part of the battle of the bands that, uh, you know, that, that's the culmination of the play. So given the opportunity, I enjoy performing. It's, it's a great outlet for me. You know, there, there are things you do in life that you do by rote that, um, that, that you know, they're, when, they're, when you're doing ordinary activities, it's, it's not uncommon to be thinking about a whole bunch of different things at the same time. And, you know, once the band kicks on, that's the only thing in my, in my mind. Mm -hmm is, you know, I'm focused on the song surrounding me and, you know, per performing for the people watching. So for me, that's a, that's a great release outlet. And that noise turns off all the other noise. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that I really enjoy that opportunity. A therapeutic uh, experience, perhaps. That's absolutely what it's become. Mm, good to hear. Yeah. You famously bring your dogs to work every single day. And anybody walking past Town Hall has a good chance of seeing you or when the staff here walking your dogs during the day. Can you tell me a little bit about working with your dogs in this building? So that started before uh, I was in this building full time. Um, we, we had, have, we have uh, a 14 and a half year old now, Australian Shepherd, mm -hmm. Minnie. Um, and you know, he's been with us since he was 15 months old. Mm -hmm. And at, about two years ago, we decided, um, you know, after, after being successful by 75%, you know, three out of four rescue dogs we were very successful with, we decided to get a, a thoroughbred Australian Shepherd puppy. And that's how we ended up with Hawkins. Um, and like many breeds of puppy, having a puppy with a dog gives the puppy something that he has to play with uh, virtually every opportunity he gets. And th so there's, First of all, there's no rest for the old dog. Second of all, my wife uh, spends most of the week working from home. Mm -hmm. And um, so to have two dogs at home with her, you know, a puppy and an old dog, while she's trying to conduct Zoom conferences mm -hmm. is more than suboptimal. Um, and I, I, my practice was such that um, with the variety of different appointments I have and breaks in the day, I could bring the puppy to work. So. Hawkins has been coming to work with me uh, back when I was practicing law. He started when he was 10 weeks old. Um, Aussies are a challenging breed. They're very smart. They're very engaging. Um, and they can be exceedingly challenging. And Hawkins just happens to have a personality that works well in an office environment. Mm. Um, he's quiet when he needs to be. He engages when it's appropriate. Um, so when I moved to the mayor's office in January, Hawkins continued to come to work with me. And, um, you know, I sound like I'm joking when I say this, but I mean it. He is the most popular person in town hall. Oh, absolutely. I was going to say his per Hawkins personality fills up the entire building. Yeah. And, you know, more people come to the mayor's office to visit Hawkins than they do to visit the mayor. <laughs> uh, and yeah, he's... He, you can't predict how a dog is going to turn out, mm -hmm. and, and he's he's just uh, he's a wonderful dog. Um, a week ago today, he turned two. Happy birthday to Hawkins! Happy birthday to Hawkins! And we you know we celebrated a little bit. He got some new toys. Um, one of the gifts that Corey, my administrative aide, brought for him uh, is a 
giggle ball, and as the ball rolls, it makes a giggling sound. It's quite loud. I've been in there while he's playing with it. Yeah, um, and and fortunately, you know, he he'll he'll play with that for five or ten minutes and then leave it alone for hours. Mm. Um, but there are other things that you know will catch his attention. He likes people. He sure does. Yes. Um, and, and, you know, he likes other toys. If, if I have, uh, you know, something the size of a tennis ball, that I can throw for him for hours. Mm -hmm. And at a certain point, I have to put it in a drawer so he doesn't see it anymore. <laughs> uh, but he's, he's a great calming factor. I, there's one incident I'll never forget. I had a resident come in, and um, the resident was upset about the progress of a certain project. And um, we were sitting in the conference room, and Hawkins decided to be in the conference Sometimes he decides not to, but he decided to attend this particular meeting. And at one point while we were talking, um, Hawkins went and, and sat on one of the chairs near one of the windows so he could look out the window. And he looked out the window and then he looked at us. And the resident looked at him and, you know, he, and he was, the resident was building kind of a head of steam and he looked at him and he's like, how can I be mad right now? You know, the, 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 the dog's presence and energy were just such a positive and calming thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Are you ever worried that Hawkins might challenge you for the mayor's seat? Um, always. <laughs> well, that's about all the time we have for us today. Again, I want to thank our mayor, Vinny Cervoni, for taking time for this interview. Thank you, Kyle. Absolutely. It's always good to talk. I want to thank the Wallingford Government TV for putting this together. They do such a wonderful job producing these and other kinds of great videos for our town. And I want to thank all of you, the Wallingford residents who tuned in for this, and all the people who helped make this such an incredible town. Thank you very much. We look forward to bringing you these videos quarterly. The next one will be uh, put out sometime around fall. Until then, take care. Mm -hmm.